Well, I'm honored to have the Texas Land Commissioner on Good Day Austin this morning, Mr. George P. Bush. How are you, sir? Great to be with you, Casey. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so thanks for coming on. So, so you did something kind of interesting during uh, the coronavirus pandemic this week. You taught a virtual lesson at the Texas Energy Institute High School in Houston. What did you talk about to the students? Well, uh, last year we devoted our agency's operations to education in Texas with a historic investment from the legislature and public education. And I thought it was important for this year to discuss energy uh, in a presidential election cycle with so many kids on the verge of graduating. And so I actually began this year teaching in the classroom throughout the state, but with the pandemic obviously moving to virtual classroom lessons. Um, but with energy really at the forefront of any economic discussion right now, uh, what a great time to bring the technologies of today into the classroom. In many cases, it's the students' house themselves um, to keep the education process moving forward as they graduate later this year. Right. So what is the, the takeaway message about energy right now? You said it yourself. It's at the forefront of, of discussions right now because we're in the midst of a global pandemic. Well, the lesson plan talks really about the history of oil and gas in the state's history and how much it is devoted to public education here in Texas. Our agency contributes billions of dollars uh, every single legislative cycle based upon the development of oil and gas in, in our state. And so talking with the students about the impact that the current correction is having uh, is pretty meaningful for them, especially those that uh, may not be looking at college but going straight into the workforce. And so as they think about these questions, not only in oil and gas, but also alternative fuels, uh, the fact that Texas generates more wind energy than any other state in the country, you know, provides an economic opportunity for them as well in the solar panel development space. Right. So th the oil, of course, this week sort of hit a, a new low. Uh, what's your take on, on that? And as far as Texas uh, reaching into the future with alternative fuels? Well, it just became news today that the governor's asking agencies like ours uh, here in Austin to downsize by up to 20%. Um, that is the type of impact that an oil correction will have. But this is truly a, a double shock to the system. There is a shock in terms of demand, now global demand going from 100 million barrels a day to some argue less than 75 million barrels, but with an oversupply issue where we've been producing as a state close to 15 million barrels. So this is requiring a lot of belt tightening in a very short period of time, which is very difficult to do when you're managing uh, thousands of wells in, in West Texas. So at the land office, what we have done is, is provide some relief to the oil and gas industry to allow them to continue their employment of their, of their blue collar workers um, and, and give them about a six month reprieve um, where we're not gonna charge interest or fees. And we think that at least we'll get some more visibility as to the direction of the commodity pricing. But uh, for a lot of our kids, this is truly a shock and a historic experience that I've been telling them about that they will probably remember for the rest of their lives. Right, right. A lot of people in the oil and gas industry are a little bit afraid about their, their jobs. Do you have some words of wisdom? So I've been speaking and, and I pride myself on trying to learn as much as I possibly can. I was in the oil and gas business before serving as an elected official. And I've reached out to as many entrepreneurs to large scale employers as I possibly can from Houston to Midland. And some are predicting a 33%, one of three unemployment rate in the oil and gas industry by the end of this year. Um, so as a state elected official, we're doing what we can at the land office. We're also encouraging the Railroad Commission to look at the, the proration idea, which they've been hearing uh, the last several weeks. We're also encouraging the president to work with Congress to look at filling up the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, which would create a floor on the price, I believe, of, of oil and gas, um, but also to encourage some of the mom and pop uh, developers to leverage the new federal programs that have been appropriated by Congress, like the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, which is there to support small businesses and allow, um, allow employers to keep their payroll afloat for the next few months. Gotcha. Well, Commissioner Bush, thank you so much. How, how are you holding up in, in this uh, pandemic? Well, not only am I teaching high school classes, I'm teaching my two boys who are now seven and five, and we're trying to keep the academic year on pace for the rest of uh, our time together. Um, it's certainly frustrating in certain aspects, but at the same time, this is a great experience to have more time with family, uh, be off social media a little bit more, uh, read more books, um, but to have our entire agency, um, about 700 employees work remotely and, and pivot to that 
in just a matter of weeks. It's been, um, it's been a, a fascinating process to watch unfold. Texas Land Commissioner George P. Bush, thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Thanks for having us.